still in Nigeria now, there will be uh, fresh opportunities for investors to look into the Nigerian health space as the Senate is close to passing a bill making health insurance compulsory for all. Compulsory for everybody. The bill known as the National Health Insurance Commission Bill repeals the National Health Insurance Scheme, NHIS, Act of 2004, which makes it optional for employers with at least five employees to enroll them in one form of health insurance plan or the other. Fascinating discussion. Arise business analyst Chika Mbono joins me in the studio to discuss this. You are welcome, sir. Um, why are experts applauding this law? Why, why are they excited over it? Okay, let's, let's, let's look at some perspectives here. Um, the health sector mm. is one area where Nigeria has lagged, lagged behind. In the World Health Care Index ranking for about 195 countries, as at um, last time it was done, Nigeria was about 187, mm. 187 out of 195. That tells you how poor we have um, ranked. Indeed, some reports tell you that um, Nigeria, you know, in all indices, maybe only about 10% of the population, you know, have, um, you know, access to good medical care. Right. And you look at all indices, whether it's birth rate, whether it's death rate, infant mortality, you know, and um, so many other parameters, HIV, you know, HIV deaths, life expectancy, we are lagging behind. So the health sector is one area that needs to be elevated and pushed to the frontiers mm. and um, so that the health of the population, the people say the health is uh, wealth. wealth yes. You don't have a healthy population, right. you know, I'm not sure you're able to work and all this drive to improve GDP and stuff, stuff that may be lacking. Mm. So you look at the system, what is it? You know, what is the problem, really? The problem, really, is that when people are sick, you know, do they have the money to go and pay the hospital bills? Mm. That's the issue. Yes. And so because of the fact that if you look at the, 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 the strata, you will find that a lot of people are surviving, are struggling to even feed themselves. Right. What more? Going to buy the medicine or going to see the hospital doctors. And so it gives room to quackery and other, other self-helps. Mm. You know, and so the federal government, in its wisdom, you know, in 2004, set up the National Health Insurance Scheme. Mm. Basically, as you read in your, you said in your role, you know, uh, in your rider, you know, the, it was not compulsory. It was optional. Right. If you had employees of up to five and above, mm. you need to provide health, you know, uh, health insurance for them. Basically, you know, the structure was you have the hospitals where you go for your treatment. So institutions called HMOs, health maintenance organizations, like insurance companies, health insurance companies, we are set up, licensed right. by the NHIS to provide these services. So companies collect the, uh, make remittances to them, the HMOs, and that's, that's like premium, mm. which then when registered people go to hospital to go and get treatment, those HMOs will um, settle. settle. But the, the system has been, you know, um, um, besought with a lot of problems. Mm. There are about, the first thing, there are about what, 70 HMOs in Nigeria. Only maybe five are viable. Only five are viable. So you have situations where, you know, uh, some HMOs collect the money from the companies, and when people go to the hospital for treatment, they tell, tell them that, you know, they don't remit or they tell you it's not covered or right. it's only covered headache or, you know, stuff like that. Long story. Yeah. Simply because of the fact that these HMOs do not have the large enrollment base, you know, right. because the, 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 the philosophy of insurance works on the fact that you have a very large enrollment base mm. and not everybody will fall sick at the same time. Right. So the premium that you collect, you use it, some of it to provide treatment for those who fall sick mm. and make some returns, you know, profit in the, in the process. But because the enrollment base is not large, mm. because of the fact that the, the, the system now is not, comp is not compulsory, okay. you know, these HMOs don't have the capacity mm. to support the system. And so people go to the hospitals, even though they have the HMO, uh, HMO registered, and they go to the hospitals, and the hospital said they will can treat you. Maybe, based on the one I know already, some of the HMOs, are owing hospitals for months right. for treatment already provided, mm. but no payments not made. So because of what I told you now, that HMOs are not strong. Right. And the other problem in the system now, as it is, is that NHIS that, you know, um, that supervises the HMOs, it is, the process is not very transparent in the sense that, you know, look at the banks, so yes. by CBN, yes. they publish their annual reports yearly. 
Yes. You know, or even quarterly, as the case may be. Look at the insurance companies supervised by NICOM. They, they publish. Right. But the HMOs, the NHIS, they don't publish any financials. So we don't even know which ones are alive or which ones are dead. Mm. So in that process, because if the financials are out in the public, you'll be able to read them and see, oh, this one is not, so that you know the ones that you will invest in. Right. So the issue now is that if this health insurance is made compulsory, as it's been proposed, it will attract more people into the net, mm. and the insurance base expands, and there is liquidity in the system that generates investment. Right. You know, because the problem we have now is that a lot of hospitals come into play, people go there for treatment, and, and they, they, they can't pay their bills. Mm. And so they can't buy the right equipment, and, they, and, and so on and so forth. So you, you will find the government hospitals are badly maintained. If you need to go to some of them, you even fall sicker when you, <laughs> the time you get there. The private hospitals are very expensive. Oh, boy. The private hospitals are very expensive. Yes. And so you, you can't go there with your cash. And that's why this is, this is, um, the industry is happy, happy for this, that it will expand the base of insured uh, people and bring more people into the net, mm. you know, of the, H, of the HMOs. Yes. And in that way, you know, it will attract more investment into mm. the system, you know. Okay. So it, 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 it sounds, sounds good theoretically. Now, however, for, you talked about liquidity. Mm. For the people that are going to be coming in, right, so the end users, right, what about their ability to pay? Okay, the, 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 the truth is, is that just like, um, you know, like Pencom is a contributory, yes. you know, it's also like that, in the sense that it's going to be a partnership between the employer and the employee. Okay. In that way, just like Pencom now, is like mandatory. Mm. You know, that's what we're looking, looking forward to, that if this is mandatory, it means that it can be audited. Right. Any company that doesn't comply, we can be penalized. Right. You know, that's the, that's the thing. Okay. So, so you have a company, ABC Limited, it has 100 employees, you know. So it's mandatory that it has an HMO. Right. That they... it's, man it's mandatory that all the staff, mm -hmm. are, you know, so it's not like self-help or whatever. That I've seen situations where, you know, some companies even go and say, see, we're going to pay the insurance company 100000 naira pay for each of you. Let's give you 50 cash. And you go and, 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 uh, yeah, and some, because people are hungry. Right. <laughs> yes, they are. They take the cash and go and do self help. Right. At the backroom pharmacies and backroom hospitals mm. and do you know that. And so that that's that's a little problem. So you find that sickness is ordinary that could be controlled with proper treatment. Mm. You know, it's a bit and that was right because of poor. Okay, I'm not sure if I should be asking this because I think I should be focusing on the. If this focuses on the formal sector, mm -hmm. empl employees. So, should can the question arise that what <laughs> arise arise TV? <laughs> can the question arise, uh, you know, as to the unemployed? Because those they they don't have. Are we, are we going too you far? Know, Am I going too far? That that not going too far. It brings to 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 be a, the issue of social security. Mm. Social security. You know, um, the, the world has been pushing universal health coverage. We are, uh, you know, people will preach that health should be a right. A human right. A human right. Yes. You know? <laughs> I, know you like, I know you like that. <laughs> that health, health should be a human right. Yes, yes. In the sense that nobody should be sick mm. and not have access to hospital. Right. As is done in some countries um, in the Western world. That's basically the proposition. You know, but as I say here... We have so much of the wealth to be able to address some of these things, mm. but we have not had the disciplined leadership, you know, over the years in this country to be able to address some of these issues. Mm. I mean, you can throw into the basket what of food, right. what of uh, housing, housing, housing right. you know, and what of education. Mm. You know, even education is, you know, that. So health is the same thing because you have to be strong and healthy to right. be able to do every other, so every other thing, you know, that. Mm. So I do believe that the government, mm. you know, you know, should provide for the lower strata of the society, you know, and by, you know, providing opportunity for them to have their free medical care. Okay. It has happened in the past in the country, and, and some people cannot see the way. Okay. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, some would say, and I, I mean, let me throw this to you, we are the giant of Africa. Mm -hmm. We are the most populous <laughs> nation on the continent. Practically, can you cover 200 million people. I mean, I know that our labor force is about 60 or so million or so, but, but, but outside labor, is that possible? I mean, because of the size. See, yes. Mm. Now, it, it just needs to look at the wastages mm. 
happen in this, in this country. And apply those. And apply those. Mm. Even as I'm talking, talking now, some state government that cannot say they cannot pay salaries. You see the kind of thing the governors are, are doing. Mm. You know, 20 car convoy, houses in left and right. right. You know, uh, special assistance. You know, very non revenue earning initiatives mm. that will not add value to the state economy. Right. I do believe that if the government at different levels, at the, whether the national and sub national levels, right. focus. actually focus yeah. on serving the people and mm. looking at the people, money can be saved to make sure these things happen. Okay. Yeah. Can I, I want to try and flip this around? Flip. Did they, uh, we've got a couple minutes left, so really quickly. D did they put the cart before the horse? Should they have focused more on, because you talked about the dilapidated healthcare, mm -hmm. in, in, you know, should they have fixed the infrastructure in healthcare first before now going to make it How much compulsory? Can the government do? Mm. Fix it, so fix by who? <laughs> okay. That's talking about government side. Right. The right. government has limitations on what it can do. Mm. Even now with the national wealth being stretched. So you're talking, when you're talking about fix, it has to do with the government side. Mm. You must always make the system attractive for foreign invest for investment to come in. Right. In the hospital business should be like banking, insurance, or every other sector. Right. So that people can invest and do their calculation and say, yes, if I come in here and open this hospital, you know, you know, I can you know get I can get results. patients and get results. Right. That's the way it's supposed to be. Mm. And if this mandatory health scheme comes into play, it will help in that respect. Mm at least for the former sector. Very fascinating. So I had more, more questions, but we have to, we have to leave it there. Chika Mbono, Arise Business Analyst, thank you so much for giving us your insights on this compulsory law.